in nuclear decay till now we have discussed in very detail the two decay processes first of all you have seen the process of alpha decay and after that beta decay now finally in this nuclear decay chapter we are going to discuss the third and the last radioactive decay process and that is called gamma decay in fact you know in an atomic system the atoms are distributed in different energy levels or different quantum states in fact similarly inside a nucleus the nucleons move in discrete quantum states with definite energy or you can say that in case of nuclei 2 there are the discrete energy levels in which the nucleons are distributed i have you can see that these horizontal lines represent the different energy levels in fact in the ground state the nucleons occupy such a quantum states which minimize the total energy of the nucleus and so that state is called ground state when the energy of the nucleus will be at its lowest value but uh, just like uh, an atomic system the nuclei may be found in its some higher energy states or you can say that uh, the excited states when you want to excite a, a an atom you supply energy from outside as heat energy or you may strike a, a projectile to the atom and the atom gets excited but uh, the two energy levels of a nucleus are separated very much it means uh, you can say that the excitation energy of a nucleus is very high in compare in comparison to the atomic system it is of the order of mega electron volt so the general process of excitation of atom is not applicable in case of the excitation of nucleus in fact it is seen that a nucleus may reach an excited state as a result of violent collision with another particle and uh, normally when alpha and beta decay takes place then the nuclei in general is found in some excited states so i have mentioned it here that often nucleus is in excited state after undergoing alpha decay or beta decay it means when a nucleus suffer uh, either an alpha decay or beta decay then it is seen that the sum of the nuclei are found are obtained in its some excited state that is the daughter nuclei are in general are uh, obtained in in excited state okay now as you know that in excited state the energy of the nucleus is very high and so definitely that will be an unstable state so the nuclei tend to uh, get the stability and for that the nucleus must release its extra energy okay and that extra energy is released or emitted by the nucleus in the form of electromagnetic radiation that is in the form of gamma photon you can see i have shown in this figure that uh, there are two energy levels of a nucleus the upper level i have uh, denoted it, it by this symbol e greater it means this is energy of this upper energy level and the lower energy level Uh, has energy e lesser this is just a symbol and if the nucleus is in this uh, higher energy level then this nucleus emits energy equal to the difference of the energy of these two energy levels that is e greater minus e lesser this much energy is emitted by the nucleus and that nucleus uh, actually falls to the lower energy state 
and the emitted energy is in the form of gamma photon so if you consider that the frequency of the emitted gamma photon is nu then simply the energy of the emitted gamma photon will be equal to e greater minus e nu okay <clears throat> that is energy of the emitted photon is simply equal to the difference of the energy of the two energy levels between which this transition takes place okay so i have mentioned it here that this e greater is the energy of the higher energy state and e lesser it is the energy of the lower energy state now you can see that this process of nucleus coming down to a lower energy level by emitting a photon is called gamma decay okay it means when an excited nucleus comes to a lower energy state a gamma photon is emitted and that very process is called gamma decay and in this uh, now in a series of lectures we will see the problems related to this gamma decay okay now uh, you can see when gamma decay takes place then what will happen you can see that uh, there will be no change in number of protons after the gamma decay it means uh, the number of protons in the parent nucleus and in the daughter nucleus after the gamma decay will remain same it means z does not get affected after gamma decay similarly the number of neutrons also does not change it means if you consider that this uh, zxa is the nucleus in some excited state and this nucleus suffers gamma decay and changed into uh, this is uh, suppose in excited state and this will change into zxa so neither z nor a gets change and a gamma photon will be emitted and since neither z nor n changes so z plus n that is the total number of nucleons which is also called mass number this will be also not affected after the gamma decay so there is there is no change in z no change in n and no change in a after gamma decay only the quantum state or the energy state of the nucleus gets changed you can see when the excited nucleus actually transits to a lower energy level then the extra energy is released in the form of gamma photon so energy state or quantum state of the nucleus gets changed after the gamma decay okay now we will actually explain the scheme of this gamma decay by taking a proper example i have taken here a proper example of the gamma decay from a nucleus co57 cobalt 57 and for this you can see the scheme by which this gamma decay is suffered by the nucleus uh, co57 in fact you can see this figure that uh, this uh, parent nucleus uh, co57 this is in its uh, ground state this is the ground state of co57 okay co57 and uh, this nucleus decays to a daughter nucleus fe57 you can see that this state actually represents fe57 after the beta decay i have shown here that this beta decay beta plus decay has taken place you can see this uh, process that this cobalt 57 has been transformed to fe57 and at the same time beta plus and neutrino are emitted created and emitted but uh, this fe57 is produced Uh, in not in its ground state but it is produced uh, in the second excited state 
you can see that this is <coughs> the ground state of this Fe57. This is also Fe57 and its energy in this state is 0 and uh, this is uh, the, uh, this state which is above 14 kilo electron volt from the uh, ground state. This is uh, also a, an excited state of this uh, Fe57 and so after the beta plus decay the nucleus Fe57 Fe is obtained in its second excited state which is 136 kilo electron volt above the ground state. You can see it here. Okay. Now this nucleus in the excited state that is in second excited state this nucleus Fe57 emits a photon of 136 kilo electron volt and reach to its ground state. You can see this nucleus emits a photon uh, which I have denoted by the symbol gamma and the energy of that photon will be 136 kilo electron volt because 136 uh, minus 0 because transition is at the ground level that will be 136. So when this uh, nucleus of Fe57 which is in its second excited state uh, transits to its ground state a photon of energy 136 kilo electron voltage emitted. Okay. But uh, this is not only the process. This uh, excited nucleus may suffer different type of mode of transition. In fact, the first excited state of Fe57 uh, corresponds to the energy 14 kilo electron volt that is it is above 14 kilo electron volt uh, uh, above the ground state. So this nucleus of Fe57 in its second excited state may transit to the first excited state and in this process again a gamma photon will be emitted and what will be the energy of this gamma photon you can see because the transition takes place between two levels having energy 136 kilo electron volt to 14 kilo electron volt so the so the energy of the emitted gamma photon will be what this will be 136 minus 14 and that will be 122 kilo electron volt okay so this is a 122 2 kilo electron volt photon okay this process may take place now the nucleus fe57 in its first excited state which corresponds to the energy 14 kilo electron volt that makes a transition from this level to the ground level and so a gamma photon will be again emitted and that photon will have how much energy here transition takes place between two levels having energy 14 kilo electron volt and 0 kilo electron volt. So the energy of the emitted photon will be what? That will be 14 a minus 0 that is 14 kilo electron volt. All these things I have shown here by this uh, nuclear reactions. You can see that this FCO57 suffers beta plus decay and it is converted into Fe57 daughter nucleus which is in its excited state. And now this uh, nucleus Fe57 which is in its second excited state may emit a gamma photon of 136 kilo electron volt and returns back to its ground state. Okay, Or in other mode you see that this uh, nucleus of Fe57 in its second excited state may transit to the first excited state of this nucleus and that for, uh, during this transition a gamma photon of 120 kilo electron volt is emitted. But this is an excited state. This is the excited state corresponding to 40 kilo electron volt we have seen. Now this uh, uh, Fe uh, nucleus which is in first excited state 
सफर से ट्रांजिशन इमिटिंग ए गामा फोटोन और फोर्ट फोर्टीन किलो इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट एंड रिटर्न बैक टू द ग्राउंड स्टेट सो यू कैन सी दैट हियर द एक्साइटेड न्यूक्लियस एफ ई फिफ्टी सेवन हैज बीन ऑबटेंड आफ्टर द इमिशन ऑफ बीटा प्लस फ्रॉम द कोबाल्ट न्यूक्लियस एंड दैट एक्साइटेड न्यूक्लियस सफर्स मोर दैन वन टाइप ऑफ ट्रांजिशन एंड इन एवरी ट्रांजिशन ए गामा फोटोन ऑफ डिफरेंट एनर्जी इज इमिटेड सो दिस इज द एस्कीमेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द इमिशन ऑफ गामा फोटोन और गामा डिके बाय द कोबाल्ट न्यूक्लियस नाउ यू कैन सी दैट एक्चुअली a stream of beta particles with energy 136 kilo electron volt of photons 122 kilo electron volt of photons and 14 kilo electron volt of photons will come from the cobalt nucleus and that a stream of beta particles is actually known as gamma rays when there will be a bulk of nuclei then uh, we will get a large number of gamma photons and that ga large number of gamma photon constitutes a stream of gamma particle and uh, that is called actually gamma rays okay now this is this is just an elementary idea of this gamma process and in this lecture uh, i will give only this elementary idea but in the forthcoming lecture you we will see the very important problems related to this gamma decay